in fiction, we find the predictable boring. In real life, we find the unpredictable terrifying. I find this quote to be an accurate commentary on the human condition. And why is that? Well, you'll see. So, unpredictability. Simply put, it's something that cannot be foreseen or foretold. And when you look at the most simple definition of the term, you will find a Bible of synonyms, each one more negative than the next. These are words like shakiness, instability, precariousness, etc. The list goes on and on. And even mentioning these words right now can flare up a feeling of anxiety within some of you. And that's completely normal. Why? Because it touches upon the universal and collective human fear of the unknown. Since the dawn of time, humans have been scared of unpredictability because it falls under the larger umbrella of the fear of the unknown. These archaic fears are part of every single one of us. Now, obviously, they're going to manifest themselves differently depending on different factors, like our experiences, our personality, our environment, our perceptions. But even considering and taking into account all of these different influences, every single person in this room right now is scared of unpredictability and of the unknown in some way or another. But the burning question here is why? Why are we scared of unpredictability? Why are we scared? Why is unpredictability a universal angst for humanity? Well, firstly, it's because of our intellectual predispositions. And let me elaborate on that. Humans distinguish themselves from every single being on this planet through their communication, particularly through the possibility of exchanging thoughts and complex ideas. And in addition to that, because we are at the very top of the food chain and we manage to construct virtually anything out of anything, we have established ourselves as a superior species in a moral, intellectual, and physical sense. Our intelligence is what we hold above all else. However, if you look beyond this whole superiority complex of the human race, especially considering our fear of unpredictability, you'll understand that our intelligence, our prized intelligence, is what will cause our downfall. Two different ideas, two different philosophers are, coming, are going to come into play here to point as to why intelligence might cause our downfall. First idea, in 1637, Descartes stormed the philosophical world by affirming cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. By affirming that I think, therefore I am, he's basically saying that there is a need of thought in order to be something. I think, therefore I am something. Conversely, if I don't think, I am nothing. He kind of remixes his thoughts in 1641 by affirming ego sum, ego existo, I think, therefore I exist. Descartes' basic idea is that if you think, therefore you exist in time and space. Second idea. About a century later, Kant affirms that if a human being can have the eye in his representation, that raises him infinitely above all other living beings on Earth. And because of this, he is a person. This is verbatim what Kant wrote, by the way. What Kant is saying is that if you're able to represent yourself as a conscious thinking being in time and space, therefore, you're automatically above all else. Now, what you can extract from these two statements is that consciousness and awareness are essential parts of our intelligence. And I want you to keep these words in mind, consciousness and awareness, because this leads us to the second reason for which humans are scared of unpredictability, and that is because of our brain. We are unable to deal with all things unpredictable because we are too aware of the risks that surround us. And that is where our intelligence, our same prized intelligence, fails us, literally. Science has suggested that we humans have a natural inclination to simulate negative outcomes whenever we are faced with even the slightest tinge of unpredictability. Because we feel the fear of unpredictability, we tend to overanalyze our environment, and as a result, we see risks and threats everywhere. We don't necessarily overanalyze our environment consciously, so why do we do it? We do it because, this is really important, it promotes survival success. 
Now, we have multiple survival instincts, but the one that's most relevant to us right now is the self-preservation instinct. And within this self-preservation instinct, you have the fight, flight, or freeze reaction, which you're all familiar with. And the goal of the self-preservation instinct is actually quite simple, to protect yourself and to survive in this cold world. Unpredictability leads to feeling unsafe and threatened. Feeling unsafe and threatened leads to an increasing sense of danger. And what happens when we feel an increasing sense of danger? The fight or flight response kicks in. This response, this reaction, is put into motion by the amygdala, which is the emotional hub of the brain. And it is part of what we call the limbic system. The limbic system is an essential structure within your brain as it ensures the good connection between different parts of your brain. And this connection, in turn, ensures the proper functioning of your body. And it's also one of the oldest parts of your brain. It emerged in the first mammals about 150 million years ago. Now, we aren't chased by mammoths anymore, so that's cool, but this is where it gets tricky. We live in a modern world. We live in modern societies where we don't need this instinct as much as we did. Our needs, as well as the nature of the threats that we might face, have completely changed. But the programming of our instincts and of our brains have stayed the same. And the cause for the widespread phenomenon, well, the main cause of the widespread phenomenon of chronic anxiety and stress disorders is because of this overlapping of ancient instincts and the modern one in which we live. Now, my goal is not to freak you out. It's not to make you think, what's the point of my life? No, I am standing on this stage right now to tell you that, yes, you may be scared, but that's okay. There's no shame in being scared. There's always a way to flip your life around and to make something positive out of whatever unpredictability comes your way. And how do you do that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, our instincts, our reactions, our fears, Everything circles back to the matters of the mind. Your mind is a powerful tool. And even if I mention that our instincts, our reactions, are the result of millions of years of evolution, your brain is so malleable. I mean, it, developed during, it develops during the whole duration of your life. And when I say that your brain is malleable, it is literally malleable. There's a phenomenon that exists within our brain called neuroplasticity. And what this does is basically means that you can change the neural networks and connections going on. This means you can rewire your brain. You can literally rewire your brain in a way that will make you see things positively. And if you do that, you're less likely to associate unpredictability and fear. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy, okay? You're Rewiring your brain, if you want to rewire your brain, obviously. You're rewiring your brain to face a fear that's literally millions of years old. However, if you're able to dissociate unpredictability from fear, you'll find an opportunity to rise and evolve. You need to find the courage within yourself to rewire your brain by one, adopting new habits, good ones preferably, and two, finding the courage within yourself not to let past experiences for you into believing that unpredictability is necessarily bad. A few years ago, I heard a statement that really struck me because it was, a new, let's say, an unusual take on life. It defined life as the following. What happens to you represents 10% of your existence, and what you decide to make of it represents 90% of your experience, of your existence, sorry. This goes to show that mindset is everything, and what you make of adversity is the greatest proof of character there is. Keep an open mind, realize the importance of letting go, and I swear your life will change for the better. Thank you.